Hey everybody, it's your pal Mike Zombie, and this week we're going to talk about Survival of the Dead from 2009. Or as I've been calling it in my house, what the fuck was that all about? See, this is the newest George Romero film. And to be honest, I'll let you know right away, I didn't like it at all. And I'm a big Romero fan. I mean, I think my other reviews, that should be pretty evident, but this movie seemed to go against everything he's ever done. George put an island off of Delaware and put two rival Irish families on that island, like the Hatfield and McCoys, pretty much. The story basically revolves around their hatred of each other, and zombies are just kind of, you know, part of the deal. The movie starts with a military unit that seem to be out of control. They're kind of sitting around, and zombies are walking among them, it seemed, and a few of them get bit, and they have to kill their own guys, and then they go uh, and kill the boss, uh, the, the whoever their leader was, and I don't know. The, the, problem, the first problem I have with this movie uh, was that everybody was an asshole. You know, the military guys were, were being assholes to each other, um, the Irish families were just really fucking assholes to each other. It seems as if George went out of his way to make it so we didn't like anybody. So it was tough to find a group of people to be behind. That was a problem for me. I like to I like to identify with either the you know the zombies, the people, or something in there to where I can get my heart into it and enjoy the film. And that simply never happened. The military guys kill their commanding officer, I guess, or whatever, uh, because he led them into danger and some of their guys got killed. They're kind of going along with, well, we've got to, you know, take care of each other and watch out, you know. And they end up spying, oh, before I even get into this, and the characters were just ridiculous. I mean, you have the leader of the military, he's just an asshole, he's a tough guy, you know, tough as nails and just, you know, doesn't take any fucking shit off anyone. And there's the beautiful lesbian uh, lady in, in their unit. And she's and they, they keep going out of their way to mention she's lesbian. You know, I got it by the fifth time you clearly made a reference to I don't like guys. You know, oh, I get it. Who gives a f- See, that's the thing. If it, if it meant anything to the story, fine. It meant nothing to the story. I don't give a fuck who's fucking who. It, it, it doesn't seem to matter. Oh, and there's a nice scene where um, she's just hanging out with everybody and just decides to masturbate sitting there in the Jeep. And, of course, uh, the other guy comes over. Hey, as you know, it's coming. He comes over. You know, uh, if you'd like some dick, here I am. You know, five minutes with me. And, boy, oh, boy, I'll turn your ass around. You know, you expect that line to happen. Oh, my God. Now that I think about it, it was Hicks and uh, uh, whatchamacallit from Alien 2. That's the same shit. You, know, you ever been confused for a man? No, have you? As are in the, in the ship coming down. It's the same fucking relationship between the two. That's good. I'm glad I just realized that because that's just yet another thing that's been borrowed in this film. Because George didn't seem to do anything original in this. Really didn't. He borrowed from other movies and from his own. We've got, you know, those two from Aliens. Characters we've seen in other movies. These zombies were very bland. They had no... And and for that... I'm glad. Uh, I've spoken before about George going out of his way to make the zombies memorable by giving them fucking band costumes or, you know, shit like this. And I don't remember any specific zombies beside the featured characters in this film, so that's good. He didn't do that this time. But he combined characters. One of the Irish families, and to be honest, I didn't give a shit about them, so I don't remember their names. Uh, It could be Scrooge McDuck for all I know. Uh, one of the guys who looked like Sean Connery was actually a pretty good actor, and he was my favorite person in the film, and even he wasn't endearing at all. But his enemy, uh, the big fat dude, that guy was a blend of two of Romero's pre-existing characters. He was he was Dr. Frankenstein from Day of the Dead and Joe Pilato, Captain Rhodes from Day of the Dead. He had both of their, both of their personalities in one. He was an asshole that uh, was fighting desperately for... He was killing zombies, but at the same time, his whole goal was that we need to preserve these people. We need to keep them alive. We need to keep them with us. And more importantly, a la Dr. Frankenstein, we need to teach them to eat things other than us. That way we can coexist. So, And then he spends the rest of his time walking around shooting zombies in the face. So it was kind of a, that made no sense at all, but that was a direct, perfect blend of Dr. Frankenstein and Captain Rhodes. Uh, let's see who else. 
I don't know. And the rest of the cast was basically people from his other movies. Um, Along with the things you see in almost every Romero film, of course, thank God he started right away with the, with the helicopter because that's in every movie. Um, there wasn't a black hero. Maybe that's why this movie sucked for me. There was no, there was no Terry Alexander. There was no Ken Foray. Maybe that there was, you know, hey, maybe that's what happened to me. You know, there was no. Well, I guess I, I almost said Tony Todd. That was the uh, sorry. That was the Tom Savini version of Night of the Living Dead. So he, he made this world to people we didn't give a shit about. We put them on an island that was an, was just, you know, out off the coast of Delaware, apparently a host only to two Irish families. They have their own island. And we get to watch their feud with each other. And like I said, we don't care about any of these people. And George didn't do anything to make us care, which is fine. I was talking to McPierce about this today, back and forth a little bit, and I thought about it. You know, I I think maybe I'm expecting too much from George Romero. You know, when you hit it out of the park and make Night of the Living Dead and then really good follow-up movies being Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead, you're setting the bar pretty high. Those are movies that everybody loves for the most part. And I'm going to judge you by everything you do since based on those works. So maybe I'm wanting too much. I like George Romero, but to be honest, he's a good director i think he's a better writer but i don't think he's great at either of those things george romero isn't a great director he's not a great writer but i've enjoyed his work very much and i've appreciated the zombies that he's brought us but i'm really wondering if the wells run dry you know if those days are i mean okay in this movie he i think he's trying to teach this moral about you know what's right or wrong keeping the dead getting rid of the dead um but they go to a lot of work to show um, that this guy, this Scrooge McDuck, needs to break his habits. Um, he needs to quit being, quit trying to live off this past feud he's having with this other dude, and um, you know, do something different and get out of this rut. Stop the hate, stop the fighting, and just I mean, and apparently he's neglected his family the whole time because even his daughter hates his guts. She's kind of hanging out with the zombies, like fuck it, I'd rather be here with the Walking Dead than go with you. So George is trying to teach us all these important things about moving on and, um, you know, bettering. And I, I think George needs to move on. I think George needs to. And I really firmly believe George Romero has a lot of good films left in him. I really do. But I don't want to see any more zombie movies from George Romero. I don't. I really don't. I, musically, I have a thing called the suck rule. If a band has been shitty longer than they were good as far as years go... I don't buy any more of their stuff. I don't give them another dollar until they come out with good product. I think I'm going to have to treat George Romero's zombies film, zombie films the same way. You know, George has done other stuff, Bruiser and Knight Rider. I mean, George has stuff in him. Uh, but I, for the life of me, I don't think I can watch another Romero zombie film. Uh, I'd be open to remakes. I personally really enjoyed Dawn of the Dead that uh, Zack Schneider did. I, I loved that movie. I thought it was great because it was not a fucking remake. It had zombies in a mall. That's pretty much it. You know, everything else was new and exciting. So I really did enjoy that film. Um, personally, I know some guys don't, but, uh, you know, whatever. And it's a different kind of zombie. All right. We have the Romero zombie and then we have the cutoff where people where you go, holy shit, is that thing running at full speed? Yeah, that's a different kind of zombie. So I respect George, but I don't respect this movie. It was fucking pointless. It really was pointless. I mean, if you try to make us like somebody to have a hero, it would have been great. And every time we thought we may have had a hero, you would just say something stupid and, you know, be an asshole. So character development out the window. This movie wasn't any good. The other problem I had, it was beautifully shot. I would say this is the most visually appealing movie George Romero has ever been involved with. It's a great looking film. All the candy in the world doesn't make up for what it was. As far as my Vegas update, because the last time we spoke, I was headed to Vegas for a bowling tournament. Uh, you know, I had a good time. I've never bowled at a bowling alley with 70 freaking lanes before, so that was kind of neat for me to do. I bowled above my average all three games. Um, I did fine. I did pretty good, but I didn't do well enough to win any money. Uh, I do have the honor. I did place as far as the, my team did take second place overall. And 
I did get the highest improved average over the course of my league. I, I started, I, I ended up 20 pins higher per game than when I started. So that was a good thing. Um, that comes with practice and not trying to bowl drunk, apparently. Um, that was fine. I uh, didn't win much gambling. Won a little tiny bit, put way back, uh, way more back in than I took out, and bought a fucking ferret, which set me back another 160 on the way out of town. So um, I don't know. It was a nice drive both ways. I like Vegas, but I don't like new digital Vegas. I don't like it. I like old Vegas, where you would go in, drop a bunch of coins in, get a bunch of coins out, whatever denomination you like, put it in a bucket and walk away. Um, with New Vegas, well, it's not really new, but everything's done on credits and, you know, and instead of playing three lines on a slot, I'm playing 34 fucking lines at four coins a piece and suddenly I put 20 bucks in and one bet later my fucking 20 bucks is gone on a slot machine? That's not for me. I'll stick with uh, roulette and I'll stick with the sports book and, uh, play th- you know, I'll play table games from now on, but I, I'm really done with slots. I don't trust computerized slots, so... It is what it is, but I had an inquiry on how my trip was, so thank you, sir. You know who you are. I hadn't even considered following up, but um, I did. Follow McPierce and I on Twitter. Um, The links are on the forum. I'll make sure they're there. They may already be. Uh, And we have something special this week to talk about. Somewhere in this podcast will be the promo for our Halloween giveaway. It's pretty kick-ass, so you'll want to get yourself involved. Survival of the Dead, 2009. If you want to see all Romero's stuff, it's certainly on the list. Uh, But you're not going to have that good feeling when it's done. Have a good week, you guys. Uh, We'll talk soon. See ya.